everyone, welcome to example four. So let's see, we are being asked to find r and a sub one for a geometric sequence with the second term being negative 18 and the fifth term being 486. Okay, so things that are standing out to me, I hear geometric and I hear sequence. So again, like always, I hear list of numbers and I have an r. Now, taking a look at what they're asking us to find, it's a bummer because we need r and we need a sub one. Those are the two most important components of the geometric sequence formula. So I gotta find those. I'm gonna have to do a little work. It tells me the second term is negative 18 and the fifth term is 486. So I can interpret this as saying a sub two is equal to negative 18 and a sub five is equal to 486. So I wanna keep those in mind. That's, that's the information that they gave us. All right, now again, I don't know r and I don't know a sub one, but I do know that since it's a geometric sequence, I get this formula at my disposal. All right, so I'm allowed to use this formula, but really, I, I, I bottom line, I need a sub one and I need r to really make this formula work for me. So how can I figure those, those two pieces of information out just based on this? So let's see what we've got here. I'm gonna put a little separator because I'm gonna start over here and then I'll, I'll move over here. So I wanna think about how I get from a sub two to a sub five. If I had a sequence written out, again, a list of numbers separated by commas, how do I get from a sub two to a sub five in a geometric sequence? Well, to get from one term to the next, you're always multiplying by r. All right, so I would multiply by r here, and then I would multiply by r here. So if I wanna to get to a sub five, and I started at a sub two, if I multiply a sub two by r by r by r, which is really r cubed, I get there. So let me rework this. Let me rewrite this because maybe this isn't making sense just yet. So give me a moment, let me try it this way, okay? Let's say I started with a sub two and then I multiplied it by r, that would get me to a sub three. I multiplied it by r again, that would get me to a sub four, and then I multiplied it by r again, that would get me to a sub five, right? So another way of rewriting that is I could say a sub five was equal to a sub two times r cubed because r times r times r is r cubed. Well, I know a sub five and I know a sub two, that would allow me to solve for r, which is huge. I need that. First off, it's one of the things I was asked to find. Plus I wanna make my formula work for me. So I know 486, is equal to negative 18 r cubed. Okay, so let me go ahead and divide both sides by negative 18. Let's see what we're getting here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do 486 divided by negative 18. So I'm looking at negative 27. So this is gonna tell me r cubed is equal to negative 27. So that will tell me that r is the cube root of negative 27 or you could think of it as 27, excuse me, negative 27. You could raise both sides of this to the one third power. But the cube root of negative 27 is negative three. All right, so I have half of my question answered. I've found my R value, which is great, but now I need to find A sub one. Well, you have all the information at this point, all right? I know A sub n values, right? Let's say we used A sub two being negative 18. I would know this was negative 18. I would know n itself was two, right? So two here, negative 18 here, and I know my r value. So if I know a sub n, I know r, and I know n, I have three of my four variables and I can solve for a sub one. So let's, let's try to work this. All right, so here we go. I could say a sub two was equal to a sub one times r to the two minus one. All right, well, again, a sub two itself is negative 18. a sub one, I don't know. r, we just found was negative three. Two minus one is one. So this is saying, well, negative 18 is equal to negative three times a sub one. And that would let me get to the fact that a sub one was six, okay? I didn't have to use a sub two being negative 18. Let's try it the other version. Let's say I used a sub five being 486. So if I used a sub five, that would be equal to a sub one 
times r to the, well, if I'm using a sub 5, this would be 5 minus 1. So let's fill this in. a sub 5 itself is 486. I don't know what a sub 1 is. I mean, we secretly do because we found it. But let's check this out. r is negative 3, and then 5 minus 1 is 4. All right, so let's see what we have here. Negative 3 to the 4th. Maybe you've got those powers of 3 down, but if I did negative 3 to the 4th, it's 81. There we go, 81. So this would be 486 would equal 81a. I'm going to divide both sides by 81. And if we do 486 divided by 81, sure enough, we get a sub 1. Oops, this should say a sub 1 is equal to 6. So either way, we're getting this to work. So my end answer here is that r is negative 3, and I can tack on to it, a sub 1 is 6. All right, so oops, let me move this up just a wee bit so you can see it. So there we go. All right, so I used these two terms to figure out what r must have been equal to. And again, if you want to go from a sub 2 to a sub 5, you've got to multiply by r, 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 which is r cubed. I solved for r, and then once I have that, that's one of the major pieces of this formula, I can then solve for a sub 1, because if I use a sub 2, I know a sub 2 itself is negative 18 and n is 2. Or I could have done it with a sub 5, because a sub 5 itself is 486 and n was 5. And that means that in this formula, all I have left to solve for is a sub 1. And you see, using either a sub 2 or a sub 5, I arrive at a sub 1 being 6. All right, so let's flip the page. We're gonna work one more formula, more of a word problem with this geometric sequence uh, formula. All right, I'll see you in a few, bye.